guys i am here with another video in the two previous videos i explained chemical weathering physical weathering but now i'll be explaining biotic weathering now when we think about the word biotic it's it is basically talking about plants and animals right or natural you know the environment vegetation and all right so biotic weathering also involves both physical and chemical processes so in case you want to know how biotic is spelled right the process of biotic weathering right now plants and animals living in rock surfaces can cause the disintegration or the decomposition of rocks right so both chemical and physical as i said before now as they grow and die they change the rocks right so various ways in which the rocks can be weathered by biotic weathering um, by way of the plant roots. Now, what happens is that normally where plants normally grow by rocks and so forth, um, normally the plants, when they get bigger, all right, so let me draw it for example. So this is a rock right and this is a little plant by the rock say the plant is growing in the crack in the rock now as the tree grows then the rock would get wider the crack in the rock that is would get wider and wider and wider as the tree grows and then the root system then would stretch out in the rock right and then it would break up the rock into small particles, right? So the rock would be break, broken up into small fragments, right? Because of the root system that is basically widening and breaking the rock apart as they grow, right? So you also have burrowing animals right by way of the burrowing animals such as rabbits and insects and earthworms now they loosen the pieces of rocks to a limited extent right so the rocks right the rocks in the floor say this is a rock underground it's normally protected by say air a layer of soil so Say that this is the layer of soil by which the rock is protected right now this layer of soil it would keep the rain and the frost out right and of course you know that with rain and with frost chemical weathering can take place now the main impact of animals and insects right they allow other weathering agents to go deeper in the soil so that they can attack the rock directly and break it down further so for example let's say earthworms and rabbits what they do is that they burrow into that protective layer of soil around the rock right leaving the bare rock now, when it leaves the bare rock, agents, right, such as the rainfall or such as temperature or different agents, right, associated with the chemical aspect of weathering can cause the rock to decompose, right? So, we could also use snails as an example because they tend to lick the rock lick the rock like the, the rock layer the soil layer that is around the rock the snails tend to lick it right to extract the minerals that they use and snails also will use their tongues to lick the raw rock as in the unprotected rock 
right, to get all the, the minerals that they need. And when they do so, they have a noticeable impact. So when this happens now, chemical weathering can also take place where it's exposed to rainfall and it's exposed to oxygen and so forth, right? So another part of weathering is decayed vegetation, right? Now, during decaying of vegetation, humic acid is the main reason right so humic acid decays plants and animals right so this is found in soil water and it's very strong especially in the tropical areas now this can also chemically alter the rock right so let's say let's say we have a rock surface here right and you have the soil around it pretend that this curly thing is the soil around it right now let's say a bird let me use a different color let me say a bird dies over here right just say that this is a bird pretend that it's a bird right so a bird dies over here no the humic acid present in the soil right it starts to work on this in order to decay it into small fragments right so the same thing happens with rocks right now with this rock right Mem remember that every rock in the soil normally has a layer of soil right around it to protect it however at times the humic acid is is normally present by the rocks so the humic acid would tend to work in the rocks and as i explained in the in the video for chemical weathering whereas you can have other acids working on rocks to decompose it the same thing happens here so when the humic acid the humic acid works on the rock it would then decompose the rock right then the rock would be of no use and sometimes even when the rock decomposes this also contributes to the humic acid right it also can strengthen the humic acid right so i hope you understood biotic weathering Stay tuned for another video, which would be on mass wasting. Like, subscribe, and see you again next time.